Psalm 19, verse number 14, excuse me, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Want to use for a thought the A clause of this verse, let the words mm -hmm. of my mouth. Yes. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. I feel bishop on me right now. Come on, come on, come on. Riding in the car on the way back. And I told him, I said, there's a song I haven't heard in a while. Uh -huh. yeah. It's yeah. one of my favorites that you sing. Yeah. You don't have to slay. A lamb anymore. Yes, yes. You don't have to sprinkle blood on the door. But there is a lamb who has taken his place. His name is Jesus, the great I am. And then he would say, He's the great I am. name is Jesus, yes. the great I am. He's the great I am. Yes. He's the great I am. His name is Jesus, the great I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I take my time and preach this morning? Let the words of my mouth. Many of you may remember at the beginning of the year, I preached from the subject, the celebration of a second chance. Do y'all remember that? And in talking to you, it was to set a stage prophetically for what our year was going to be. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing about it, if you did not receive the word of the Lord, and you did not embrace the word of the Lord, then you will miss the word of the Lord. Right. Amen. But there are some of us in this room that this year is going to be a year of second chances. Amen. Things that have been missed, opportunities that have been lost, are going to be brought back around in our favor and into our lives. Somebody ought to take a moment and thank the Lord if that's you. Some things that fell apart in the past are getting ready to come back into your life in a better way than they were before. That is the will of God for us, but he does not want you to squander what he's going to give you. Yeah. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, for us to experience and to receive these blessings that God wants to bring into our life, it requires that we are properly postured and properly positioned. Uh -huh. mm. Properly postured and properly positioned. Mm -hmm. The position deals with our location. Yes, yes. My God. Our posture deals with the nature of our heart when we get there. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ain't nobody talking. Come on, come on. I said your position deals with your location. Uh -huh. But your posture deals with the attitude of your heart when you get there. When I was preaching the other night, Brother Robert, I was preaching at the home going celebration. I talked about some things you just got to know. One of the things you got to know is that life is filled with uncertainties. 
Ladies and gentlemen, life is going to bring you some uncertain times and uncertain things that are going to happen to you. But watch this now. We're talking about posturing and positioning. Listen to this. Psalm number 37, verse number 6 says this. The steps of a good man. If I ain't keeping the light this morning, y'all going to talk to me. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But I want you to hear something. Yesterday, while we were at the home doing service, one of the preachers said something that resonated in my heart. He says, God not only orders your steps, but he also orders your stops. Amen. He not only orders your steps, but he also orders your stops. And, and when I think about God ordering my stops, I understand that really the truth of the matter is we are on a journey. Yes. We're on a journey called life. Yes. And in this journey, there are, listen, matter of fact, let me work it like this. If you go out into a graveyard and you look on a tombstone, to the left there is a day, and to the right there is a day. But what matters most is not the day on the left and not the day on the right. What matters is the punctuation mark that falls in between the two. The punctuation mark that falls between the two is a punctuation mark called the dash. That means he was the preacher. God, the dash. And the question of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is what are you going to do with your dash? Let me go deeper. Take my mic down just a little bit. It's a little too hot in the house. What are you going to do with your dash? Uh -huh. But let me add to that, ladies and gentlemen, and tell you that your one dash that falls on your on the tombstone is made up of a series of dashes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Come on. And each one of those dashes has a starting point. And a stopping point. But not just the steps of a good man are ordered, but the stops of a good man are ordered, ordered by the Lord. What are you saying, Long? I'm saying that in the course of life, there will be some stop. I think of it kind of like a sightseeing journey. When you go sightseeing, if you go up to New York or you go somewhere, they take you sightseeing and they get you may get on the bus and you get on a journey. But on the journey, there are some stops. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Because, the, oh my God, I feel the anointing right here. Because there are some things that you need to see, and there are things that you are there to learn when you get to those stops. Yeah. Yes, sir. I need to stop right here and say to somebody in this sanctuary, you need to pay attention to the experiences of your life because God is taking you to these stops, even though they might seem bad sometimes. There's some things you need to learn from the stops. Yeah. Some of us, I hear God right now, some of us are so busy complaining about the, the, the in-between dashes. We're so busy complaining about the experiences that we're missing the lessons we're supposed to learn while we're on our dash. Yeah. Somebody ought to ask God, Lord, help me to learn the lessons I'm supposed to learn. At every stop, every stop, every stop, every stop. I need to learn what I'm supposed to learn at every stop. Mm. At each location, there are things that we see and things that we do. The idea of God ordering our steps and our stops is so powerful to me because, like I said, life is a series of experiences of both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're 8, you're 18, or you're 80, mm -hmm. if you're still breathing, uh -huh. you're still on a journey. Yes. Amen. Talk, sir. If you're still breathing, you're still on the journey. Amen. But I need you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that time is the vehicle on which we take our journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Time Jesus. is the vehicle on which we take. Because see, watch this. When we leave here, yeah. when we check out of here, we will no longer be in time. Uh -huh. That's right. I 
we should have a church. Come on, come on. When we leave here, yeah. when we check out of here, right. we will no longer be in time. time. Yeah. We will have stepped over from time into eternity. But while we're here, mm -hmm. we are dealing with a vehicle that takes us through our dash called time. Mm -hmm. mm. And the Lord said to me this morning when I woke up, he said, I want you to get in kingdom life this morning because I don't want them to miss these opportunities that I want to bring into their life. And he said, I want you to talk to them about their mouth. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on now. He said, because the thing that can propel you into blessing uh -huh. or can cause your greatest demise yes. is Lord. your mouth. Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I know some of us think we are good like this and we can talk our way into just about anything we want. Mm. Uh -huh. Come on, man. man. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all brothers. Yes, sir. Dang it. Woo! Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, we in here. The reason why you got your wife right now. Because mm, you know, because you knew how to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You said just the right words <laughs> to talk your way into her heart. My God. My, my, my. Brother B, you better holler back at me, sir. <laughs> Brother Floyd, help me. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> Talking good, sir. But I submit to you today the same tongue that can talk you into some things can also talk you right out of it. Uh, I remember. Oh, I feel like preaching. Preach, 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 preach. I remember when I used to sell Yellow Page advertising. And they have this motto that once you present your product and you give your presentation and then they say you offer the clothes. Uh -huh. What that means is you ask for the order. Uh -huh. After you've given all your product, you told them what, you, what your product does and told them what the benefits are, uh -huh. you now have to ask for the order. Uh -huh. Don't sit there and expect the person yeah. to jump on it and say, oh, I want that. That's right. That's right. You have to ask them yes. for the order. Yes. But watch this. There was a saying that they had in sales. They said, once you've given your clothes, he who talks first loses. Uh -oh. Jesus. Because sometimes you can what happens to salespeople, and I'm gonna bring it back home in just a moment, but what happens to salespeople is that when in that awkward silence, when they're waiting on the person to give them their decision, all of a sudden an insecurity rises up. A subconscious insecurity rises up, and so often what they'll do is they'll automatically jump down. Now you offer what they call the A price. The A price is the all the bells and whistles. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. But because in your mind, in your subconscious mind, you didn't think the person was going to go for the bells and whistles, you, before you left them, after you presented your A package, before you gave them the chance to give you an answer, you already dropped all the way down to your C package. Uh -huh. Are y'all walking with me today? Yeah. You dropped all the way down to your C package. Your A package might have been $20,000. Your C package is only five. Uh -huh. But because of your insecurity, you talk first. Uh -huh. And I, I remember I had an owner tell me, watch this, Mr. Lisa. He told me, he said, you know what? I'm going to buy your, your well, he, I call it the C package. But he said, I'm going to buy that package right there. Uh -huh. He said, just to let you know, I was going to buy that package until you offered me that one. The commission from a twenty thousand dollar sale dropped down the commission to the commission for a five thousand dollar sale because I was insecure. Watch this, and here's my point: I talked my way out of what I really should have been letting ride and using my mouth to receive. Some of us have been talking our way out of some stuff yeah. that 
God has wanted to bless you with. He said to me, what many of us do is we mismanage this resource called time. Yeah. And we mismanage the resource called our mouth. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. Woo! We mismanage this resource called our mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm going to step on some toes today, so y'all just get yeah. ready. Yeah. Come on. Just because you think a thing does not mean you're supposed to say a thing. That's right. I don't know what it is about folk when they start getting older. They begin to feel like they have the right to say what they want to say. It's like, I earned the right to say what I think. Baby, you didn't earn a right to say things that are going to be harmful and hurtful to people. Just because you got a little older? No, that means you're me. I'm trying not to go there, but you know. <laughs> With me, and we think we can just say what we want to say. I'm gonna show you through the word of God today that you can't do that. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. It's gonna cut deep. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. I'm gonna go ahead and read it for the sake of time from the Living Bible. It says, Let no harmful word come out of your mouth. Yes. But only, somebody say only. only. Only what is beneficial for building others up according to the need. Mm. Come on, come on. Woo -wee. Yeah. So that it gives grace to those who hear it. Mm. Mm. Let me read that again. Let no harmful words come out of your mouth. But only what is beneficial for building others up according to the need. Yes. So that it gives grace to those who hear it. Amen. Let's pause and do a self-examination. How often have we let words come out of our mouths that were not beneficial to other people? How often have we put words out there out of our anger? Mm -hmm. Let me let me work right here for a minute. It's kind of like a man who had a wooden fence in his backyard. <laughs> and he told his son, because his son had an anger problem. He said, every time you get angry and want to say things you shouldn't, here's some nails and here is a hammer. <laughs> 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 Go in the backyard, mm -hmm. and I'll, every time you get angry and want to say something you have no business, uh, nail a nail <laughs> into the fence. <laughs> so day after day, the little boy would get mad. He'd go out to the backyard, banging nails into the fence. Slowly over time, he started to get a little better. And so his daddy said, now as you start to do a little better, go and pull the nails out. Watch this. He had a lot of nails uh -huh. to pull out of the fence. But that wasn't the problem. Uh -huh. The problem was, even once <coughs> the nails were pulled out, the holes were still there. That's right. Some of the words that we have said Ooh. out of our mouths oh, yeah. to our husband, to our wife, to our children, to our boss, to our co-workers, to people that are, are quote unquote friends with us or people we don't like. Mm. Oh. We walked away from the situation and we pulled the nails out by saying, I forgot about it. I forgave him. I left it alone. But you still left holes. How many holes have you left in people's lives, in relationships, because of your mouth? Yes. 
I'm glad y'all tell me you love me because y'all, if, if not, I have to have security to put you out. Come on. How do you? How many holes have you left? Can I tell you another way that we mismanage the resource called our mouth? Mm-hmm. Not knowing when to speak and when not to. Yes, sir. That's true. I can't hear nobody. Yeah. Not knowing when to speak and when not to. Yes, there are times when we should speak up that we don't speak up. That's right. God, that's and then there are times when we don't speak up or when we do speak up when we shouldn't speak up. Why do we always feel like we got to say something at any given moment? The Bible says practice to be silent. Yes. Okay, let me give you another one. Be slow to anger. Slow to speak. Swift to hear. It's good. Now, here's the problem. Some of us are saying amen, but that's not us. We're not slow to speak. We're not slow to anger. And we're definitely not swift to hear. It's tight, but it's right. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Last week, I was sitting in training. And while I was sitting in training, the trainer asked me some questions. He asked me, what were some things that could be improved? I'm thinking he's asking legitimately. So I gave him honest answers. I wasn't trying to complain because if, if he hadn't asked me, I wouldn't open my mouth. Uh-huh. But he asked me what could be improved, so I gave him my answer. Uh-huh. Well, apparently, whatever my answer was made him mad. Oh, no, wasn't the right answer for him. Made him mad. So, y'all, watch this. So the man for the rest of the week was recording the entire time I was there. Wow. So that he could turn it into HR to say that I was against the company. Wow. Wow. He was. He even told me on Friday, if it were up to me, you'd have been fired on Tuesday. Wow. Wow. Thank God it wasn't up to you. <laughs> don't, 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 don't fool with that because that'll make me shot right there. <laughs> but understand, ladies and gentlemen, when he said all of this, I was sitting there and I realized he brought up on Thursday, he had brought up something that I had done because on Wednesday night we were in this training and they called us back into the training at about 5.30 p.m. They called us back in the training downstairs in the training room. Well, it was 9.15 before they released us from the training. Without any warning, without any heads up that we were going to be that long, so we could have at least maybe ordered something to eat or had something to drink. Nothing. I'm getting to a point. Follow me. That night, sitting there, about nine something, he's telling these stories. Some of them made sense, some of them didn't. Yeah. Help me, Jesus. I was getting agitated. I'm going to be honest, I was getting agitated. Because <laughs> which one of y'all would have wanted to be there at 9.15 at night after you, got, after you started work at 9 a.m. And they didn't give you a heads up that your training day was going to go that long. If you had known in advance, you might have been prepared for it. Okay, well watch this. So one of the girls next to me said something while he was telling the story. And I, held, I had something in my hand and I held it up and I giggled. It was funny. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't, I ain't got it like bishop yet. See, when you become a bishop, you supposed to be able to keep a straight face through almost anything. So I got till August when they consecrate me to learn how to do that. <laughs> but the point is, it bothered him that I laughed. He actually thought I was talking and I said something smart. And I didn't say anything. Well, the next morning we were in the in the office. I got there early. And he said, you know what? I really see management potential in you, but what you did last night just ruined it all for me. Wow. I said, okay. okay. And so when he said it, watch this. I want you to hear something. This is, I'm, I'm coming into this thing right here. So when he said it, I sat there and I thought about it. And despite the fact that he was accused of me of saying something, I said, well, I didn't say anything. So what I did was laugh. Uh-huh. He said, you lying. 
So no, I'm not lying. One thing I'm not going to do is say a lot to you. But here's the point. I stopped and I said to him, I said, you know what? I was wrong for being disrespectful to you. I should not have done that. No matter how I was feeling, it should not have come out in the moment that it came out. Mm -hmm. That's right. Are y'all with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It should not have come out in the way that it came out. It should not have been on my face. It was disrespectful. Whether I liked him or not, his position was what mattered. Yeah. I'm helping somebody in the church right now. Because sometimes we have trouble respecting a person. But you need to learn how to respect the position. Amen. 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 Well, how do I separate the position from the person? God ordained the position. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people got to learn how to operate in the position. Right. And in them learning how to operate in the position, you may not always like who they are. That's yeah, right. that's right. Amen. Talk to So some of y'all got bosses that you don't like. That's right. But just because you got a boss you don't like, you don't like does not mean that you should not respect their That's true. position. That's right. That's right. Ah. That's true. Consider yourself. When everybody else is talking about your boss, uh-huh. and they got the, you know, around the water cooler they're talking, and you get in there right with them, and yeah, she so you may not say much, but you agree with them. Uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> You're right. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. You agree. You may not say much, but you agree with them. And half the time, what happens is when the things come down, you see, watch this. When I was there at the training, all the other people in the training were saying the same thing that I was saying. I was the one that got called out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. <laughs> I was the one that got called out. But you know what I said? I said, I'll take the blow. If they're scared to say what they really mean and what they really think is, I'll take it. But they've been saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're quick to get angry, yes. but we're not swift to hear. Yes. He said something to me. He says, "You know what? I got a problem with you." Okay. He said, "My problem with you is you may not say it, but something about you, you just have this air like you know it." <laughs> 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 you, you just, there's something about you. You just act like you know everything. <laughs> I realized something. Yeah. See, the Bible says in Matthew, agree quickly with your adversary. Mm. I'm trying to help somebody right here. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Matthew, agree quickly with your adversary. Sometimes the devil ain't lying. <laughs> Sometimes the devil is not lying. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I did, I wrote on my tablet, Ferris, everything isn't for you to say. Stop fighting back and just hush. I had to remind myself. Yes. Uh-huh. The preacher mm-hmm. with the collar on, uh-huh. who's about to become a bishop, yes. had to tell myself, uh-huh. shut up. Yes. <laughs> You're fighting too much. Sometimes, watch this, you are killing your opportunities because you're opening your mouth when you shouldn't. Yes. God wants to bless you and take you into abundance, but you're killing it with your mouth. Bishop, you're going to get me in trouble in here. <laughs> Bishop said, women, listen. Brothers, y'all better listen to Yeah. But often, watch this, since Bishop said it, there is validity to what Bishop has said. You know what the validity is? Men speak an average about seven to 10,000 words a day. Women speak anywhere from 25 to 35,000 words a day. 
Statistically, it's proven. You can go look it up on Google right now. Right. So a lot of times, the problem for men, watch this, the problem for men is when we should speak up, we don't speak up. When we, what happens to us as men, uh-oh, I'm getting in trouble with the brothers, I'm talking right here. What happens to us as men is we shut down. We stop talking. When we get upset, when we get frustrated, we stop talking. And our wives or the women that are connected to us, they get bothered because they're used to communication. They would rather talk it out. And brothers, you don't feel like talking. Can I get an amen from a few of my brothers in here? You don't feel like talking. So we shut down. So let me show you the balance. Brothers, sometimes we're not supposed to shut down. And we don't just do it to our wives. We do it on our jobs. We do it to other people. Brothers, am I talking right? You're right. You're talking good, sir. We do it. In, every, in many areas of our life, we do it. When we get frustrated, we shut down. And so watch this. I, they have the saying, use your words. Many of us are frustrated because we don't know how to use our words. We don't know how to articulate what we're thinking, so that's why we shut down. Because then we're afraid that if we say the wrong thing, it's going to cause more problems. Listen, I really came here to help somebody today because I'm telling you, God, listen, when I told you that God's going to bring opportunities back around in your life, and this is going to be the year of the celebration of the second chance, I need you to understand, God doesn't just want to bless you with money. We think we need money. But do you not see, we always shout, oh, I got the favor of God on my life. Do you not know your mouth can mess up your favor? Your mouth is messing up your favor. Uh oh. It's about to get deep, y'all. Some of you don't even realize you have the reputation of being a gossip. Mm -hmm. Even though people are still smiling in your face. Because mm -hmm. you know everybody's business. <laughs> and watch this you have become the human dumping ground everybody if they want to talk about something that's going on in the city they call you wow. now I pointed to the school so I didn't mean to the school so I just pointed over there <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about Mr. Lisa in particular but ladies and gentlemen I want you to get my point my point is that they'll call you because they know you'll listen and then you'll be the person that said, you'll be on the phone, and you may not mention names, but you'll be, I heard. <laughs> you know, they said. Zim. You know what they told me? Yeah, that's what they told me. I don't know how true it is, honey, but. They said. They said. Right. But, but, but I kind of believe, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but I kind of believe it. <laughs> Am I stepping on any toes today? Lord, help us. Come on, man. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is you can mess up. See, because watch this. The Bible talks about the, so a man who knows how to conceal a matter. Mm -hmm. let me, let me, you want some more Bible? Let me give you more Bible. It says, let's see, where, where's that scripture I want? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 17, 9. Write it down. I'm almost there. Proverbs 17, 9. Says these words. Whoever would foster love covers an offense. But whoever repeats a matter separates close friends. Wow. Did y'all? That was the Bible, right? I read the Bible? Yes. Okay. It said... Whoever fosters love is a person who covers an offense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But whoever repeats a matter mm -hmm. separates close friends. Mm -hmm. wow. That's why you can't, for you married couples, that's why you can't tell your mama and them everything. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, man. Because you and your husband, you and your wife will have made up, and your other family members are still mad at them, 
because you told them what went on. That's right. Your family doesn't forgive as easily as you do. Ooh. Ooh. That's right. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. My God. <laughs> Help us, Lord. You know you're a preacher. <laughs> and the proof that I'm a preacher, Bishop, is I'm meddling. <laughs> I'm meddling in some people's business right now. But your family cannot forgive as easily as you do. Here y'all are five years from now. Y'all are gone on. He walks in to the family dinner and your mom's still cutting her eyes at him like this. <laughs> you got to understand. And wait a minute. Let me go further. Not just can you not tell your family, this is the things you'll need to tell your friends. That's, That's right. That's right. That's right. You're telling your friends some stuff you shouldn't be telling. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you love, sometimes you have to conceal a matter. Mm -hmm. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Right. Right. Now, there will be times you need to get wisdom on a situation. Yeah. There's a difference between seeking wisdom and running your mouth. Right. Well, see, uh oh, I hear God. Oh, he's talking in the end of day. You know what the problem is, though? We go to people who don't have wisdom mm -hmm. to give us wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's true. Oh, That's true. Uh -huh. Okay, let me do it like this. She's had four husbands. Wow. And the one she's with right now ain't even her. <laughs> Matter of fact, the one she's with right now is somebody else's. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you're going to her for wisdom. Uh, uh, Ladies. Come on now. Jesus. Brothers, his marriage is on the rocks. Uh -huh. yeah. And you want to run to him. Mm -hmm. Talk to him about getting advice on how to handle yours. Uh -huh. Find somebody who has True. wisdom. Amen. Let God lead you to people who have wisdom. Yes. Amen. Amen. Cause you jack your life up. Yes. Running your mouth. That's right. I'm about to close this thing. Oh, up. man, that's, that's good. good. That's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 23. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give you a couple of scriptures to tie up with this today. I told you that blessing or demise comes from your mouth. Mm. Are y'all with me? Yes. 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 So ladies and gentlemen, Proverbs 21, 23 says this. Those who guard their mouth keep themselves from calamity. Yes. How much calamity has come in your life because you didn't guard your mouth? Mm. Now I know the King James reads a little bit differently, but that's the essence of what it's saying. Mm -hmm. It says, those who guard their mouth, those who know how to keep their tongue, Keep yourself from calamity. Right. Sometimes you say too much. Right. Mm. Amen. Sometimes less is more. Mm. Yes. Am I helping anybody right there? Right. Sometimes yes. less is more. Sometimes you're giving up too much information. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Everybody can't handle where you're going. Right. That's right. That's right. Sometimes you start trying to explain stuff to people <coughs> that don't deserve an explanation. They'll go out and misinterpret the information and spread it wrong. Right. Right. Yes, they right. free. They won't even charge. <laughs> <laughs> They'll spread the information that they thought you said because they interpret it through their lens. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. You have to understand that any relationship that you have is a collision of two histories. Yes. Friendships, boyfriend, girlfriend, work. It's a collision. When you go to work with Floyd, everybody else at your job has a different history than you do. So you might go one, two, three, A, B, C, but the way they were brought up, they might go C, B, A, three, two, one. <laughs> but if you all land at the same place, we get mad because you didn't do it the way I'm used to. But what's my point? My point is this. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we, have, we, we, we talk and people are looking at you. You have to understand, people are listening to you through their lens. Mm -hmm. yes. 
They're listening to you through their place of experience. Mm -hmm. yes. So while you're trying to convey one thing, they're hearing something completely different. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parents, you wonder why your children are tripping? Because you're trying to convey one thing that really is going to help them. But all they hear is like Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but let me help my young people. Young people, y'all listen to me. Pay attention to this. Many times, your parents, hear me kids, y'all are trying to communicate to them what you're feeling. And because they don't completely understand everything. See, and parents, we make a mistake for telling them, well, what you've done and where you've been and what you've experienced, I've already been there and done that. Yeah, some of it, but you've not. See, there are demons that have been released in the earth now that were not operating before. Amen. Amen. Your children are up against stuff now that they that you were not up against when you were a child. Amen. There are influence. Okay, let me show you. Many of you were not exposed to pornography at, at I mean, having it at hand when you were a child. That's right. It wasn't something you could just go and get. You might have found a videotape somewhere here and there that, that Uncle So-and-So had stashed. Or you might have found a little, what they call a nudie magazine. But it wasn't available to you readily like that then as it is to our children now. All they got to do is pick up their smartphone and touch in the right website and they can get all the pornography they want to watch. Right. Wait a minute, work mom. Not only do they have to, they don't even have to pick up their phone and get on their smartphone and type their porn. All they got to do is watch TV. Preach. Right. Yeah. 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 That's it. I don't heard the clothes y'all. That's what you said. But y'all know, back when, when some of y'all were coming up, all you saw was the man and the woman kiss, and then the scene changed. That's right. That's it. Right. They left everything to your imagination. Now, on regular TV. network television, yeah. you can see it's almost soft porn. Yeah. I mean, you literally see it half their body yeah. on regular network TV. Yeah. Somebody just want me to hurry up and get off of this. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> but watch this. My point that I'm trying to make is, parents, you don't understand. There are things that have been released against your children that you have no clue of. And when they're trying to talk to you, to you parents, they sound like the Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. So there's a communication break. And when there's a communication break, there are problems in the relationship with parents and children, husbands and wives, bosses and employees, between friends. When there's communication break, there is problem. There are problems. I'm about to close. <clears throat> I heard the man say yesterday, when you get to be a bishop, you get three closes. <laughs> All right. But those who guard themselves, who guard their mouth, keep themselves from calamity. Sometimes, and when we look at the scriptures and we, we look at these things about our mouth. Uh, let me show you something. You talk your, I said, you talk yourself into stuff. You talk yourself out of stuff. The Lord also said to me this morning, he said, Mom, I want you to tell them that calamity can come when we don't operate by faith. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I'm almost there. I said, calamity can come when you don't operate by faith. Uh -huh. I told you that life is a series of dashes within your dash. Uh -huh. <laughs> Talk to her. Life is a series of what? Dashes yeah. within your dash. Yeah. Okay, so that means it's a series of experiences, experience of different things. And so you will have opportunities to talk yourself out of blessings God wants to release. Mm -hmm. You know why it's important for you to spend time with God? Because spending time with God affects your heart. Yes, yes. Y'all ready to walk up this hill with me? Yes. Spending time with God affects your heart. Heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God. When you spend time with God, it affects your oh. heart. How does it affect your heart? When you spend time with Him, you begin to know that you can trust Him. Yes. 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 Right. Come on, come on. And when you begin to trust Him, 
you begin to operate your life very differently. Yes. When you begin to trust God, you begin to trust Him and you begin to talk differently. Yes. Because spending time with God has now affected your life. Yes. It has affected your heart in a positive way. Yes. Mm. God, what are you saying, Long? I'm trying to tell you that your mouth is bringing you either blessing or calamity. Yes. Mm. Yes. Y'all gonna help me up this hill right here. I feel that. Yes. I said your mouth is bringing you either blessing or calamity. I'm trying to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, that your heart is where everything comes from out of your mouth. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse number 45, that the good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good. And the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I can tell what's really going on in your life if I just sit and listen to you long enough. I can tell who you really are if I just sit and listen to you long enough. I can tell how much faith you really have if I sit and listen to you long enough. What are you trying to say long? Your heart is affecting your mouth. Tell somebody that your heart is affecting your mouth. Tell somebody your heart is affecting your mouth. You gotta be careful what's in your heart. Because what's in your heart is gonna come out of your mouth. I feel something happening in here, y'all. I said your heart is affecting what's coming out of your mouth. And that's why I read the text that said, God let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. God, I want you to let the word, the words that I speak, let them be life to somebody. The words that I speak, let them be words of faith and not doubt. Some of you have missed a blessing because you started talking your way out of a blessing. You started talking your way out of a miracle. You started saying things like, what if God doesn't do it? Well, I came to talk to somebody today to tell you you got to get to a place down in your heart that you trust that God's going to do it. And what you're going to say, it's going to work in my favor. Things are turning in my direction. Say yeah! I'm gone, y'all. But I remember that Friday when I left that meeting. I was pulling out of the meeting and the man said, if it's up to me, you're going to be fired. But I got in my car and I said, God, I'm a little nervous right now, but I know I should have shut my mouth. But I got favor. I said, God, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and you turn it like a river. I said, God, I don't care what they say. You gave me this job, and because you gave it to me, it's too strong for me to lose it. So, God, I thank you. I thank you for the favor that rests on me. I didn't feel faith. Oh, let me help somebody right here. You're not going to always feel what God is doing in your life. You just got to trust that he's doing it for you anyway. Hey, I didn't feel the favor right there, but I still declared I've got favor. I didn't feel the favor right there, but I still said, but Monday I'm going to have my job. But I still declare I'm going to make a whole lot of money on this job. Yes, 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 yes. 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 I said it uh-huh. and I had to hold on to it. Yes. Can I preach to somebody in here today? I got to go, but can I preach to you right here? Y'all don't understand that every single day from Friday until Monday, my body, because it was under the stress of concern about the situation, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning and could not go back to sleep. The preacher? Yes. The man with the collar? Yes. The man that preaches faith to y'all? Yes. Right here. 
I said, if I'm going to be awake, yeah. I'm going to talk yeah. what I'm supposed to say. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to be awake, if body, you don't want to let me go back to sleep because you're dealing with all the stress, I tell you what, you can do whatever you're going to do, but I'm going to talk my way through it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, God. Tell somebody around you, say, hey, neighbor, hey, talk your way through it. Sometimes you've been quiet when you should have spoke up. You've been letting the devil run through your mind, telling you it's not going to work, telling you you're going to be sick for the rest of your life, telling you your life is over, telling you that your family is destroyed. It's time for you to speak up and declare what God has said. It's time for you to speak up and declare what God has spoken over you. Every promise of God is yes and amen.
The sun is shining. Yes, it is. Which represents God's blessing and favor shining down on you. Mm -hmm. But your complaints mm -hmm. are creating the clouds mm -hmm. that are blocking the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sun is still there. Mm -hmm. Ready to shine down on you. But you've been complaining so much. You've been blocking the sun. Mm -hmm. So watch this. When you block the sunlight, you complain because now it's dark. Oh, mm -hmm. Jesus. I hope y'all caught what I just said. You were the one who, by your complaints and by your mouth, created the cloud mm -hmm. that's blocking your sunlight. Mm -hmm. And now you complain about it being dark. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Amen. The Lord says, stop complaining. That's right. I don't know who this is for, but it's for somebody sitting right up in here. Because yeah. you've been blocking yourself from getting what God really wants to have for you. Jesus. Because you've been complaining so much. Yes. Wow. I don't like this. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. This gets on my nerves. Yeah. Hush. 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 <coughs> Sometimes, I'm, 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 I promise, this is my third one, right? But sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, what we have done is we have complained so much and talked so much that people who were designed to be a blessing to us no longer want to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. The Lord said something to me today as I was getting dressed. He said, Pharisee, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who say, I don't need nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I don't need you. And I don't need them. Mm -hmm. I don't need them. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The Bible says, give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Yeah. Run it over. Shall be. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Shall who? Me. And that is not gender specific. That's right. Male and female. Yes. Are supposed to bless your life. Yes. But you've been blocking your blessing because of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is Somebody you've come in contact with was a multi-billionaire. And instead of you talking about vision, you were talking about all your problems. Mm. Mm. They could have been prepared to fund your blessing. Yes. Fund your vision. Yeah. And now they walk away. Mm. You've been talking too much. Yes. Complaining. Complain. Talking about other people. Yes. But it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Here is my hope today. My hope is that nobody in this room will look next to them. Give me some music. No one will look next to them. No one will look around them. Nobody will look across the room. Bring it down. Nobody will look across the room. All the way. Bring it down, please. I need them to hear. Break down some more. All the way. Take it down. Thank you. Right there. That's good. Um, I don't want anybody looking across the room at somebody else. Say, yeah, you know. You know, Sister So and So, I hope she heard the message. I hope Miss Alicia was listening. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Me too. Just me. But I don't want anybody else. Looking across the room at Minister Lisa saying, I hope she was listening. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I don't want Minister Lisa looking across the room at anybody else and I hope he was listening. Today's message was a mirror for every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest. My teens, did y'all hear something in this message about you today? Did it wake you up some stuff about your mouth today? Lama, did you hear something? Keisha? You heard something. How many of you needed this word today? Amen. 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 
It might not have been the word that excited you. And I'm glad it did. My job isn't to excite you. My job is to give you principles that are going to cause you to live. And live your best life. See, that's the thing they got now. They got this thing, this statement from a live your best life. Living your best life doesn't mean you got you making bags. For those of y'all don't know what that means, you're making money. Right. Living your best life is not just because you got money in your pocket. No. Sometimes your best life is having peace of mind. That's right. Yes. Yes. And when, oh, by the way, when you run your mouth too much, you become a center of drama. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. There are some of you in here, you are drama trip. Mm -hmm. If things aren't dramatic and there's not a bunch of drama going on, you don't know what to do. Because uh -huh. you've become so accustomed to drama being around uh -huh. your environment. Uh -huh. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Yes. So when peace comes, you don't even know how to sit still. Uh -huh. mm. Because of that's, that's what you're used to. We have caused so much harm by the words of our mouth. Some things aren't for you to speak on. Can I give you, can I give you just one more thing? Yes. Here's, here's the last thing. Stop being cowardly in your confrontations. What? I said stop being cowardly in your confrontations. What do you mean? You'll have a problem with somebody else. But let me say it like this. Sister Rosalind, you'll have a problem with me. But instead of talking to me, you're going to talk to Lisa. you have a problem with so-and-so, but instead of talking to them, you go to somebody else to talk about them. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. Nothing gets resolved. That's right. When you're talking to everybody else, Except the person you upset with. That's yeah. right. Amen. 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 Right. And that's what we do. Let's be honest. Because you know what we say? I I don't I don't like to be confrontational. I don't like to I don't I don't like to be in mess. You're making a mess. Because <laughs> you're running your mouth to people who weren't even involved in the situation. They have nothing to do with it and you're running your mouth. And nothing gets solved between you and the person. Because now the other person is looking at them cross-eyed. And they know that you've been talking about them because this person's acting funny and they know that you and this person are friends. I, you, you know that me and Ms. Lisa are friends. So when you come around, me and Ms. Felicia have been talking about you, you can feel it. You, you may not be able to put your finger on exactly what it is, but you feel something. And Ms. Felicia said, they're like, <laughs> but I need y'all to understand. <clears throat> this is the year. I need you to hear it again. I'm going to keep saying it through the entire year because this was the prophetic word of the Lord, the declaration. Listen, it's May. You got seven months left for God to bring you your second chance. Mm -hmm. If he hasn't already. Mm -hmm. Some of you need to start. God, okay, I'm trying, y'all. Really, I'm trying to stop. But I just saw something. <coughs> the Lord says, some of you need to talk your way into your blessing. Mm -hmm. He says, I just want to see if you're going to be persistent enough. Hmm. Jesus. He says, I just want to see if you're going to be persistent enough to keep your language the same through the whole process. Mm -hmm. mm. Funny how God, well, y'all remember last week, yeah. yeah, funny how God. Uh, Sarah laughed uh -huh. when the promise was given because she didn't believe that God happened. Mm -hmm. She ended up laughing when she got the promise mm -hmm. because it did happen. Yeah. 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 But in between, there had to be a persistence. I told you, her and Abraham were past the childbearing years. Nothing was working. And y'all catch my truth when I say it. Uh -huh. But when God breathed into them, yes. their second chance. Yes, yes. 
they had to be persistent and go work that thing. Yes. So that Isaac could show up. Mm -hmm. The Lord is saying to somebody in this room right now, you are going to have to keep confessing and confessing and confessing and confessing and confessing and confessing. And, confessing. and I don't care if it's three years confessing. Five years confessing. If you know God said it, uh -huh. keep talking what God said. Amen. Keep saying it. Yes. Here it is. Tell somebody around you. Say it until you see it. Say it until you see it. Say it until you see it. Woo! Say it until you see it. Say it until you see it. Thank you, Lord. Say it until you see it. Now talk to yourself. Say Point to yourself. You see it. Tell yourself. Say it. I'm going to say it. I gave up. Yeah. I said I want to be a multi-millionaire, but I kind of backed down off of it. But I'm going to keep saying it until I see it. Because yeah. I said I'm 42 years old now. How is God going to make me a millionaire at 42? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to keep saying it. Yeah. Until I see it. Yeah. I got people I need to bless. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep saying it. Yeah. Until I see yeah. it. Yeah. My children. Yeah. Until I see it. Yeah. My family's going to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep saying it. Until I see it. Ah, yeah. glory. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Lord. Jesus. Anybody else in here? Yeah. Agree with me? Yeah. 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 Who else is going to say it to you? Yeah. Jump up on your feet and just start praising yeah. God. Yeah. Start praising yeah. him. Start praising yeah. him. Start praising him. Come on, y'all be quiet. Y'all say praise him. I need your mouth to set an atmosphere for your miracle.
climax. If the opening act looked like that, she got a new car. A $2,000 funeral got paid for. And both of them got three day vacations. What you think the climax is going to look like? Give me your hands. 